One of the really cool things about the Switch is just the large number of different accessories you can design for it. It's so adaptable that it allows for a huge range of different weird things, and I especially love any of them that allow you to actually connect and use Joy-Cons. Which brings us to today's piece, the Switch Keyboard. Now you might be wondering, why does this exist for the Switch? I mean, there's not exactly a lot of games out there that use a keyboard, right? True, at least in the US. I mean, as far as using keyboard in most games go, there's only very specific situations where you have to use one, and at most it's something like naming your character in Skyrim. Otherwise, uses for a keyboard are pretty limited right now, especially since we don't really have any kind of full online system for chat or anything. Which is why this actually isn't available in the US at all. It's currently exclusive to Japan, but it was pretty easy to import. And the reason it's available in Japan is because there's a single MMO available on the Switch only in Japan, which is Dragon Quest X. And for a game, like that, it makes a lot of sense to have a keyboard available. Because yeah, you can adapt it to being able to play comfortably and do things like combat, and that all makes sense, but as soon as you want to chat in-game, not having a keyboard is basically garbage. And then, I started eating garbage! And this isn't even the first one they actually made for it. Dragon Quest has been out for some time in Japan now, and they had another one from Hori release that was just a regular keyboard that would hook into the Switch. But what's interesting about this one is it comes from a company called Cyber Gadget, and as you can see, it actually attaches the Joy-Cons onto it as well. It is still a wired keyboard setup, but it creates something that fits a little more, I think, with the overall theme of how the Switch is designed. And in fact, for Nintendo, this isn't even an idea that is unique to the Switch. This is something that Nintendo has done and licensed before, back in 2002, on the GameCube. Back when Fantasy Star 1 and 2 came out, once again, MMO situation, keyboards are a little handy, they released an ASCII controller that was kind of ridiculous looking, because here, you know, it's a standalone keyboard that has slots for the Joy-Cons to attach to. Back then, it was just a GameCube controller with a full keyboard put in the middle of it, and it was stretched out and just this insane looking piece of tech. Now, as I said, this is something that we can't actually fully make use of in the US yet because there's not any games that really require it, but that doesn't mean that you can't use it at all. This will hook up to a US Switch and work just fine for the few and very limited applications where it'll come up. So let's check it out. By the way, if you're wondering what Joy-Cons we have attached to the keyboard, these are actually skinned Joy-Cons made by today's sponsor, Dbrand. They have a whole bunch of different Switch skins that are safe to use on the dock, on the Switch itself, and of course, Joy-Cons. You can get them in seven different colors or in white or a couple of different black options. The one we're using right now is my personal favorite, the carbon fiber. If you're interested in checking them out and want to grab some, check out the link down below. So obviously this isn't going to be the most in-depth test in the world. I'm just going to find a place where I need to enter text and try using the keyboard instead of the pop-up one on the Switch. So I'm just going to go to my user settings and mess with my name. And yeah, that's a working keyboard. That was easy. Uh, <laughs> but having it in this configuration and actually set up the Switch does kind of just give me some ideas right away about while this is not exactly something useful just yet for any games in the US, down the line, once something like this is useful, there's a lot of thoughts I have just using this keyboard. First off, I really wish it had a longer cable because right now we're actually using a USB extension. This is everything you have right now, which if you're using your Switch in some kind of docked desk setup, that can make sense. But for any kind of living room design, this is just not nearly enough for use, which is really annoying. The other thing too that really jumps out at me is that, look, using a controller like this is obviously not the most comfortable thing in the world, but because it is so similar in design as to just using the Switch in portable mode, you're kind of already trained to use it rather comfortably. Like, it feels pretty natural to just use this controller this way and hold it. In fact, it's so close that I really wish the keyboard was just a little bit smaller, which might make the keys a little too annoyingly small, but if it was just the same dimensions as the Switch, you could also then make use of things like different grips or protective cases, so you could get that better grip design giving you the balance of having access to the keyboard and having a more comfortable grip on the Joy-Cons as opposed to using this whole flat design. So yeah, I mean, it looks kind of ridiculous, but to be honest, this isn't that bad of a setup and really has me thinking more about you know, what the Switch needs to do to really start making something like this a really viable option for everyone to pick up. Now, the obvious answer is, of course, why this guy even exists in the first place, MMOs. If there's any genre of video game that absolutely needs a keyboard, it's an MMO, because once again, chat is very important. But there's a lot more that could apply to the Switch where a keyboard could come in handy. One of the things we talked about before is the fact that the Switch, while a great little handheld gaming system, is still lacking a lot as far as a multimedia device. Now, normally when we're talking about that, we're talking about things like movie or music streaming, but one of the big things that the Switch is also currently lacking on is a proper internet browser. Now, people have found some ways to kind of cheat a little bit and gain access to 
one that kind of works, just not very well. But if Nintendo were to eventually actually have a proper browser on the Switch, access to a keyboard would be great because using the onboard screen in portable mode might be okay, but as soon as you're in any kind of situation where you're say you're docked, that's not gonna work very well at all. And really, if you wanna go full crazy, there's also the idea of what you could do with the interaction between the keyboard and Joy-Cons as well. Imagine having games that embrace not only using the Joy-Cons for controls and using the sticks as an easy way to move and look around, but actually embracing the number of options that open up by having a keyboard made available. MMOs are an obvious option here, but you could even start opening up other crazier genres normally not available on consoles, especially handhelds like this, like RTS. Something likely to happen? No, probably not. That's actually really insane. I don't think it'll ever happen, but it's the kind of thing that I really want Nintendo to look more and more into. The part of the thing that's really cool about the Switch is the risks it's been taking, and I want to see more crazy ideas of how you can incorporate accessories like this into more games.